302 on mine, 301 on yours. All right, very good. Um, so the tabernacle proper, all right? Really? Anybody need one? There you go. We got one. There we go. All right. Now, just because you have one doesn't mean that if you don't have it with you, then if you use, I don't know. Anyways, so we'll, we'll go on here. Um, the tabernacle proper. Um, yeah, you'll notice I don't have my gallon jug. I left it in the bus. So, yeah, it's already froze. It was froze when I walked out the bus, probably. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm down to little bottles here. So, um, so uh, I was thinking maybe I could put both up there. Eh, it's too much to work with. I was going to say I could put the study up on one side and the scripture up on the other, but um, then moving back and forth between them is just, it'll be a hassle. So the tabernacle proper. Now we have all the stuff typed out here. We're not going to read through all of that. It says to read. Um, you know what? Maybe we will. All right. Exodus chapter 26, verses 1 through 30. Anybody ever read that? Okay, we're going to read it right now. Everybody got coffee, right? No? You didn't get coffee? Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> um, with this, the, the reason that I ask that is because you got to stick with it here to catch what's going on, all right? And this is 30 verses, so, okay. Moreover. Thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. Uh, the length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, the breadth of one curtain, four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have uh, one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled to uh, one to another. Uh, and other five curtains shall be coupled together or coupled one to another. And thou shalt make uh, loops of blue upon the edge of the, of the one curtain from the, uh, from the selvage uh, in the coupling. And likewise, thou shalt make in the uttermost edge of another curtain uh, in the coupling of the second 50 loops. <clears throat> shalt thou make uh, in the one curtain and 50 loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain um, that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another and thou shalt make 50 tatches of gold and uh, couple the curtains together with the tatches. And it shall be uh, one tabernacle and thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be the covering upon the tabernacle, 11 curtains shalt thou make. Uh, the length of one curtain shall be 30 cubits, and the breadth of one curtain, four cubits, and the uh, 11 curtains shall be all one measure. And thou shalt uh, couple curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, <clears throat> and shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle, uh, and thou shalt make 50 loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling and 50 loops of the edge in the edge of the curtain, which coupleth the second. Everybody picturing this? Hopefully it's not just a bunch of words. Uh, just in case you don't picture it, there it is. All the cows fell over, but there it is. We're in Exodus chapter 30, uh, verse 11. 26, I'm sorry, 26. Did I say 30? Yeah. I meant meant to say chapter 26, verses 1 through 30. Yes, sir. And I'll read this, and I try to picture mm -hmm. what all these measurements and what I think, but that right there. Okay. So that is a 1 to 90 model. So you multiply every, every measurement on that by 90, and that's the size of the tabernacle. So... <clears throat> That's now some of the things aren't actually gold and, you know, all that. So, you know, the, some of these things are it's it's, you know, what you can get for fifty five dollars. So. <laughs> so that's that. So <clears throat> thou shalt make 50 tatches of brass. We're in we're in uh, Exodus 
26, verse 11. Thou shalt make uh, 50 tatches of brass and put the tatches into the loops and couple the tent together that it may be one. And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth, uh, shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle. I wondered if that was the way it was supposed to be, and that's exactly right. I was like, man, that's an awful lot to hang over the back side there, and that's exactly what it says to do. <clears throat> and the the cubit on the on the one side, and the cubit and a cubit on the other side. Uh, just real quick for those of you that haven't been here for the rest of the study, we're we're studying on the tabernacle um, and its likeness to our New Testament. Uh, uh, to the Lord and the New Testament and all that. So um, some something about the measurements. A cubit is about 18 inches, okay? So when you see this, a cubit here, so many cubits there, it's about 18 inches per cubit. So foot and a half per cubit. So you take whatever number of cubits it is, multiply it by 1.5, and that tells you how many feet you have. So there you go. So a cubit there is foot and a half and... Um, a cubit on the other side of that which uh, remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent. It shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. <clears throat> and thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering above of badger skins. And thou shalt make boards of the tab tabernacle uh, of shittim wood standing up. Uh, 10 cubits shall be the length of a board and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Uh, two tenons shall there be in one board set in order one against another. Um, thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle and thou shalt make the boards of the tabernacle 20 boards on the south side southward and thou shalt make uh, 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards. <clears throat> two sockets uh, under one board uh, for his two tenons and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. Does anybody remember when we were putting this together? You know, those the, the, the things, you can't see them under this, and I don't want to mess up the, the beautiful job the ladies did on the, the weave here, but you can see these here, these little, little gold-looking boards there. Those are... Uh, those at the bottom of those that go into the into the ground of it, um, they're they've got little spike or they're they're separated. So now it didn't come with the little silver pieces that sit on the bottom, but um, you get the idea, right? And those were a little tedious to put together because there was a rod that went through them to hold them all in one place. And so um, <clears throat> and there are forty sockets of silver, two sockets uh, under one board and two sockets under another board, and for the sides. Of the tabernacle westward, thou shalt make six boards. West is over here. We, we laid that out actually in the direction, you know, north is that way, east faces the east all the time. So it's it's facing the way that it would um, in the Bible. So uh, the two boards shall uh, shalt thou and two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides, and that and they uh, shall be coupled together beneath and they shall be uh, coupled together above uh, the head of it into one ring thus shalt thou or thus shall it be for them both <clears throat> they shall be uh, for the two corners and uh, they should be the eight board they should be eight boards and their sockets of for 16 sockets two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board and thou shalt make uh, bars of shittim wood um, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards on the side of the tabernacle uh, for the two sides westward and, and the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end and thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places of bars uh, for places for the bars <clears throat> and thou shalt overlay the bars with gold and thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed thee in the mount. There you go. It's a lot of reading. Anybody have the picture in their head? It's right here, right? <laughs> um, 
So there you go. Um, Exodus, uh, yeah, 26, thir verses 36 and 37. Thou shalt make an hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework. And thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. And then in uh, chapter 36, verses 8 through 34, I'm going to let you read that on your own later because it's a, um, some of, you'll, you'll have a few extra things there given, but, um, and then we'll go ahead and read verses 37, 38. Uh, and he made, this is, this is basically, he's told to do it and he does it. Make sense? So uh, chapter 26, he's told to do it uh, there in chapter 26. Um, and then it talks about them doing it in chapter 36. You know, it talks about every wise hearted man among the work. And, and so they, they start gathering the stuff, they start doing it. And then in um, 36 verse, uh, verses, oops. Uh, 37, 38 talks about, it continues. He made the, the door of the tabernacle and so on, right? So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and read verses one through five of Hebrews nine. Then verily the first covenant also, or had also ordinances of divine service uh, and a worldly sanctuary. So uh, this referring, of course, picking up in the middle of the book of Hebrews uh, or toward the end there, uh, this is referring to the old tabernacle the the first covenant the the uh and and here he's talking about the ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary in other in other words one that is in the world it's here it's it's you know earthly for there was a tabernacle made the first <clears throat> wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread which is called the sanctuary and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, <clears throat> uh, wherein was the golden pot uh, that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant and over the cherubim, over the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat <clears throat> of, the, uh, of which we cannot now speak particularly. In other words, he wasn't going to get into that at that moment, but he's just describing this is the tabernacle. Right. So the tabernacle was erected as follows. Its northern, southern and western sides were made using interlocking boards. Uh, when the uh, then the structure was completely covered with a with four layers of curtains. All right. So um, the layers of curtains, which let me just unhook this one. Am I going to be OK or am I going to mess it up? Am I going to mess it up? All right. All right, so you see the layers there? You've got the top layer here, then there's like a red layer, and then a white layer, and then a layer that a pattern of uh, like seraphim or cherubim, I mean. So there you go. It survived. All right. <clears throat> so you got the four layers. So the first or the inner curtain um, is made of fine twined linen and blue purple and scarlet embroidered with cherubims right um that was probably made of polyester but it's kind of to give you the idea right um so is that vista print special probably yeah 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 so um the top one does kind of feel like fur but I don't think it is. It's just a some sort of like a microfiber uh, print, you know, or, or printed microfiber or something like that. Anyways, um, so if you weren't here to watch it get built, uh, we built it on Sunday evening uh, a few weeks ago. But the first layer is the layer on the bottom. And so if you weren't able to see it, then after the service, you can come up and peek under and look at that first layer. Um, and you can see that there's some sort of print on it that looks kind of like it doesn't really look much like 
cherubim is just kind of like a it looks like kind of like a figure of something with wings but there you go so um <clears throat> it's close enough for for what we're trying to do anyway so um then uh first there's a blank there number two first what oh really okay it's 10 mm -hmm. uh so yours must say there were 10 there were first 10 curtains or there were okay mine says first 10 curtains each measuring 28 cubits by four cubits uh as we have here moreover thou shalt make a tabernacle uh, with 10 curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with uh, cherubim of cunning work shalt thou make them uh, the length of one shall be eight and twenty cubits and the breadth of one four cubits <clears throat> oh 820 yeah eight and twenty yep eight and twenty by four so so that's what's 28 cubits is 28 times 1.5 28 times 1.5 30 42 yeah so 42 feet by six feet right four times 1.5 would be six right all right <clears throat> so it's kind of long and skinny right um so uh number three Five of these curtains were to be coupled together to make two larger curtains. Um, number four, I, I'm not reading all the passages here. We already read all this, so there you go. Um, I forgot I typed out each verse for each of the things here, so we could have just read it as we went instead of reading it all at once. But there you go. Number four, 50 loops were made. <clears throat> from the selvage. Anybody know what a selvage is? Well, there you go. It defined it for you in the study. It's a fringe along one side of these larger curtains. Um, sorry, I'm checking my, uh, check, checking my text messages here from, because my wife may, may chime in on something. I don't know. Yes, sir. It's fringe like, uh, like the top where the bottom where it's kind of like, our pipe stalled out, by the way. Our, sorry, my wife sent me a text that our pipe stalled out. So, so the fringe is like the the edge. Yeah. So like um, the the part around the edges. So <clears throat> thought out. I don't know. She just says the the water's running in the kitchen and the bathroom now. So, praise the Lord. Your what? Drain to the washer. Oh, man. Wow. Did it do any damage? Good. Good. I've done I've done at least two uh, insurance claims for that exact thing. Not not that it froze, but something clogged in there and it sprayed out and they they got new flooring and new drywall. And it was what, twenty thousand dollar claim, something like that. So. Yep. <laughs> Happened in the middle of the night or something, I think. But yeah, they had they had wood laminate floor too. Wood laminate floor. That was all recorded, by the way. So <laughs> you know better. If the water starts going, you got to stop the water. All right. Um, <clears throat> if you're not home and it happens and you didn't know anything about it, yeah. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so. Uh, yeah, we didn't stop the recording, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> hey, flip that light on right there, AJ. See, he's innocent. He's got a he's got a halo over his head. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> We're gonna interrogate you now. We're gonna take the halo and point it at your face. Um, all right, number five, fifty 
patches of, what'd you say? Gold. Uh, then joined these curtains to, uh, into a single one tabernacle, right? As verse six says, <clears throat> as we already read. Note, the final measurement of the inner curtain was 28 cubits by 40 cubits. <clears throat> Since the tabernacle was 30 cubits by 10 cubits and 10 cubits high, this meant both crossways and lengthwise, or length, sorry, crosswise and lengthwise. Um, sorry, it's something to, I should use a cough drop instead of a candy, but that'll work. Is that number four? Uh, loops and selvage. I do too. I got a whole bag of them in here. I just had candy closer. So. <clears throat> What? Yeah. Oh, you wanted to know how to spell it. S-E-L-V-E-D-G-E. -E -E. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not to be confused with salvage. Selvage. Yes. So actually spelled very similar without the A at the beginning. So. Uh, so let me read that again. The final measurement of the inner curtain was <clears throat> 28 cubits by 40 cubits. This is a lot bigger than a cough drop. Since the tabernacle was 30 cubits by 10 cubits and 10 cubits high, this meant both crosswise and lengthwise, the beautiful curtain remained at least one cubit off the ground. So when you look at it, it's, if we put it on there right, not the top one, but the first one is one, it's, one cubit off the ground or 18 inches divided by 90. So if somebody wants to take millimeters and measure and make sure we got the curtain right. You can... <laughs> <clears throat> the second curtain made of what? What'd you say? Okay. I thought you said something else. Goat's care, goat's, goat's care, goat's hair. Yes, goat's hair. What's that? <laughs> yeah, goats don't care. Is you're right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Except when you take their hair off, they do care. So sometimes they'll scream about it. Other times they'll faint. Um, number two. What's that? <laughs> What's that? You gotta have them together. The one screams and the other one faints. <laughs> oh my. And then the one that fainted wakes up and scares the one that and then screams again. <laughs> so just get a whole field of those, you know, and just <laughs> boy oh boy. Well, and then there's the other ones that jump. You ever seen those things? Yeah. They'll jump like like jump off of each other and stuff and like do like flips and stuff. It's crazy. Oh wow. <clears throat> That's different than uh, we had uh, we were in at Mount Rushmore and there were these mountain goats that were just running free. Or, you know, or not running, they were grazing, grazing the grass next to Mount Rushmore. Amelia walks up and goes to pet them. Those are wild animals. Don't touch them, you know, because <laughs> they weren't pets. I mean, because like the, the buffalo were just roaming around wherever out there. And, and so anyways, um, yeah, they had long hair, though. Those were like the long haired mountain goats. Like they were like this tall and they were standing on a hill. It was crazy because it was like he's like bending down eating. But the hills like this and he's standing one foot or two, two, two feet like on one part and two feet on another and it's like their body just shifts and it works and they just bend down and eat like it's no big deal and i'm like whoa yeah we saw we saw one at the badlands too just out in the middle of nowhere on the top of this like um what were those things called i don't know they were like little mountain looking things of of sand or whatever i don't know what those were even made of dirt dust i don't know anyways it was pretty cool though because they're like they just climb like it's no no big deal um so goats hair mountain goats 
There you go. We just that was that was a that was a great uh, following that goat trail right down the road. Yes, sir. What? Goat's hair was the what did you say? Dreadlock hair. Um, the ones that had the long hair, it was kind of nappy. So yeah, um, it was it was all, but it was like this. It was, they were relatively clean considering the environment where they're at. There's white haired goats, you know, and they, but and they got these like weird horns coming off their heads. So something like that one that they were overlaid in gold and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. We snatched one. No. Not really. This was from Brother Adam's trip to Israel, but that it, that's kind of like, it's kind of like, maybe it was it. That's about the other way, right? Like this, <laughs> like that. There you go. Yeah. So except they had two of them, except they were kind of more circular instead of like, like you know, yeah. Instead of chiseled away. Well, they were kind of like, kind of like rams. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll talk about those when we get to the third curtain. Um, <clears throat> constructed from 11 curtains, each measuring 30 cubits by four cubits. Yes. So there's the verses backing it up. This is all in chapter 26 that we already read. Um, so the sixth curtain was made double. Then the two larger curtains were bound together with 50 tatches of brass so note here the final dimension of this second curtain was um, <clears throat> 30 cubits by 42 cubits this means it completely covered the northern southern uh, and western sides down to the ground with a two cubit overhang on the eastern uh, door side which we didn't do we just laid it flat so um, third curtain made of made from what ram skins dyed red yes there's uh verse 14 there i gotta keep up with the, the verses there so the outer covering uh this final covering was made of badger skins and our instructions called it something else i can't remember what they called it some kind of cow water cow or something Yeah, the instructions called it a sea cow. A sea cow? Badger skins. Anyways, so those are those are supposed to be badger skins. Yeah. So that's what happens is uh, when you when you mistranslate the Bible, you you turn out with a cow instead of a badger. I don't. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so just pretend that right there. That's badger skins. Um, just a bunch of them all together, right? Because obviously that's a lot of badger skin. You think about how much we're going to talk about how uh, how big. So the Gershonites were given two wagons and four oxen to carry all the coverings and hangings. That's a lot of coverings and hangings. <clears throat> the boards made from what? Shatim wood. Uh, overlaid with gold. They measured yeah, 10 cubits by one and a half cubits wide. I need to keep up here. Um, where am I at here? 29, yep. And 16. And made with two finger-like Tenons, yes, They're like spikes. The sockets, a total of 96, yes, 96 silver. I'm sorry, I gave you the next answer. 96 silver sockets or sockets of silver. Um, an additional four sockets were used for the pillars supporting the veil. Uh, according to Exodus 38:27. Where are we at here? Okay. Each socket weighed a, a talent. 
This was the equivalent to approximately 114 pounds, okay? At today's prices, now this was back then, um, now you have to, we'd have to figure actually today's prices. This was, this was written a while back. What does yours say? At today's prices, uh, each socket would be worth well over, what's, what's yours say? The study, what's it say? Is that what it says? Really? Mine says $10,000 US dollars. The tabernacle rested on five tons of silver. Yeah. So what is the current price of silver? I can't get information about this commodity. Why not? Sorry about that. You got to buy We said current, current, current silver price. Here we go. Current price of silver is, whoa, it's way down. Per ounce, $16. That's way down. Well, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because it's way, it changes big time. Because it was like 40 bucks like a year ago. So sixteen dollars and eleven cents. Sixteen eleven. So right. So sixteen eleven times sixteen because it's sixteen pounds or sixteen ounces per pound, right? And so um, that is two hundred and fifty-seven dollars and seventy-six cents times one hundred and fourteen pounds for one socket. $29,000, one socket. That's per hundred pounds. Well, he says, let's go back to pounds. What was it, two uh, divided by? So this is the pound the price per pound times 10,000 pounds. Two million, 2.57 million dollars worth of silver. That's just the sockets. We didn't even talk about gold, all the gold overlaid. I mean, all that stuff. Anyways, interesting to see those numbers because, you know, you start talking about they had a free will offering for the tabernacle. That wasn't a tithe. That was above the tithe, the free will offering to build the tabernacle. And you've got literally millions and millions of dollars worth of material to put in the tabernacle. And we look at it and we're like, oh, yeah, it was just a tent in the wilderness. It was a tent with a whole lot of gold and silver and a lot of stuff. It's kind of a big deal. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And the, I mean, the, the fabric was expensive as well. And then the wood and, you know, yeah. Yeah. With them in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Some of it came from the Egyptians. Yep, some of it came from the Egyptians. Um, and then, you know, but you think about how many people there were. Um, there were there were around a million people with them. So, because the numbers, when you read in the book of Numbers, it gives you the, the amount of adult men per tribe. And it gives you the full amount. I've got it written down in my Bible, like all the, all the numbers. But there were around 600,000, roughly, men. So you just figure for every man, there's probably maybe a woman for every man and then children potentially and they didn't have like two person families back then so if you figure that they only had one kid that's still more than a million so there you're, you're really talking closer to like two and a half three million people really yeah so you split up you know several or maybe a billion dollars, maybe, or, or a few hundred million of what it might have. Well, no, it probably only cost about 10, 10 to 20 million dollars for all the stuff for that, if we figured it in today's numbers. But anyways, pretty crazy. <clears throat> and we and we're like, we want to build this. We want to build out this thing over here. And it's $10,000. And people are like, $10,000. I mean, you got to million dollar 
million dollars of three million dollars of gold or of silver underneath just holding up the the, the tent on that <clears throat> not to mention all the gold which we may get into some of those numbers later but the bars made of again what kind of wood shatim wood overlaid with gold well okay there were a total of 15 bars, five on each side. Um, these linked and stabilized the boards by passing uh, through golden, is that? Five golden rings, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not content, I'm not pushing through these as we go. So there's the, um, that there's the rings there's um the what middle bar went through the bar through the boards the entire length of the side and then the uh it says note here that the um marerites <clears throat> were given four wagons and eight oxen to transport all the boards, bars, and sockets. And it gives you some passages here where it talks about that. Um, then, oh, I copied that one twice. Well, that's because it's in the next one. The door, the entire east end of the tabernacle comprised its door. And then it describes it there. Uh, Thou shalt make an, an hanging, uh, Exodus 26, verses 36 and 37. Thou shalt make it hanging. Uh, for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework and thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold and thou shalt cast five or yeah five sockets of brass for them um so now all that we just read is going to give you the answers here on uh, numbers one through three under h um the entire uh, I already read that part. <laughs> the construction of the door, a what? Hanging of blue, purple, uh, scarlet, and fine twined linen. The support of the door, pillars, uh, five pillars uh, made of shatim wood overlaid with gold, standing upon sockets of brass. Yes, brass. So... That was in the next verse there. Um, <clears throat> all right, the pins and cords. Now, this part, I'm trying to hurry through a lot of this because I want to get to the typology because that's kind of like where we start looking at application because it's great to know these things, but what good is it if there's no application for us, right? It's like, oh, yeah, it's cool. There's a tent, the wilderness. It's expensive, neat, you know. We know what it was made of, you know, but when you start talking about the typology, now you can, oh, okay, I see. Now I'm getting it, right? <clears throat> so the pens and the cords. The tabernacle was a portable structure, yet its construction was remarkable. It had no nails, bolts, screws, glue, or hinges. Yet it effortless, effortlessly withstood 40 years of wilderness heat, wind, and storms. Its sides were extremely heavy. <clears throat> it rested on very weighty sockets. It had four, it had a four layered roof and uh, the outer layer being very durable as, uh, as, as described here in Ezekiel 16, 10, I clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with badger skin. And I girded thee uh, with fine twine or fine linen and, I covered thee with silk. Um, they're referring to the strength of that badger skin. Um, <clears throat> it was locked together by bars and rings. On top of that, it was further secured by pins made of brass and cords. Um, here, Exodus 27, verse 19, all the vessels of the tabernacle 
uh, in all the service thereof and all the pins thereof and all the pins of the court and, uh, shall be of brass. <clears throat> By the way, brass isn't free either. <laughs> um, it may be worth a whole lot less than silver, but um, it's worth something. It's, it's expensive as well, um, especially when you start talking about lots and lots and lots of brass. So the typology of the tent, and yes, there is a difference between bronze and brass. Um, typology of the tent, its appearance. From the inside, it glor uh, the glories of the Lord Jesus Christ. So look here at Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Song of Solomon 5, 16. Uh, his mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. He is, or this is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Psalm 96, verse uh, 6 through 9. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holy, holiness. <clears throat> fear before him all the earth and then um yeah that verse is for later the magnificent curtain made a ceiling which pictured christ in his earthly perfections as presented by each of the gospels the cherubim guardians of god's throne god's majesty um <clears throat> around the sides would be seen the radiance of gold or a picture of deity right from the outside drab doll expressing what most men think of christ right in isaiah 52 verse 14 as many were uh, a stonied at thee his visage was so marred than any man and his form more than the sons of men um <clears throat> and then uh, chapter 53 verses 2 through 4 he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground he hath no form nor com comeliness and when he shall see when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted so we find that uh, the outside, just the same as the outside of our Lord, was often looked at as uh, not so much to look upon, per se, in that time, right? He was described as that. In fact, in Philippians 2, verses 7 and 8, it says, But made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, right? When people think about God and they think about the, the things of God, oftentimes they, they look at, they're looking for something great, something big, something amazing, right? But when Jesus came, he came as a servant. He came first to serve and to die for us, right? Um, so from the outside perspective, his first appearance there wasn't some magnificentness about them. Just the same. We look at that and it's kind of like, well, that's kind of cool. Except like it's a tent. Right. But then we look at the inside and whoa, look at all that. You know, um, <clears throat> you realize what it's made up of. Right. And you, you see all the symbolism and everything. So first Corinthians chapter one, verses 18, 27 through 31 says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and hath uh, chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made <clears throat> unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according 
as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. This is uh, the perspective that we ought to have. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7, it says, Unto you which believe, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same has become the head of the corner. Right from the outside. the says here the, the metal most seen from the outside was brass, proclaiming the need of, for sin to be judged. Once inside, however, it was all gold and beauty. Right? So we see the brass on the outside. Remember, brass symbolizing what? The the judgment. Mm. The gold symbolizing deity, perfection, holiness, beauty. And then the brass being judgment and the weighty matters, of, you know, those kind of things. So, yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. Could brass be in part? In other one way to say we see in part. In part. But then once you get inside, gold and beauty. <clears throat> right. Well, even then, even then, the inside they saw in part because the inside was a picture of something else, right? The inside was a, was a picture of, of Christ, a picture of the glories of Christ. So it, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we see in the outside. But in a sense, though, we now, we see in part, we know in part, although part of that, um, part of that prophecy, by the way, was talking about the fulfillment of the word of God, fulfillment of the writing of the word of God. So we don't see as much in part as Paul did and you might say, well, wait a minute, the Apostle Paul? I mean, God gave us lots of his word through the Apostle Paul. But Paul still saw in part because the word wasn't completed. You know, even after he died, there was more scripture that was that, that the Lord wrote, so or that the Lord gave us. And so, like, the book of Revelation was years, many years after he passed. So um, now we, we have the whole picture. We have that which is perfect now. Um, but there's another aspect to that prophecy where, uh, when we're going to see him, we're going to see him face to face and we're going to know him even as we are known. Right. Right. So that's uh, <clears throat> that's a, a ram trail we can run later. Um, <laughs> so in between the work of Christ and reconciling man to God was ram skins. That's why I mentioned the ram trail there. Um, the ram was a sacred animal. Remember Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered him upon or, or up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son, right? So the ram in that passage was a picture of Jesus Christ being uh, sacrificed in our place, right? That sacrificial or that, that substitutionary sacrifice. So uh, just the same, the ram skin there being a sacrificial animal um, was put uh, in between the inside and the outside. So it, it shows us that, uh, um, again, that, that as Christ is in between us and God, reconciling the world to God, as uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 talks about. Um, <clears throat> goat's hair, two goats were sacrificed on the day of, on the great day of atonement, right? That's where we get the term scapegoat, by the way. Scapegoat comes from the day of atonement. For Israel, they had a scapegoat, one that, that would take the rat for everybody and be taken by a fit man, run off into the wilderness and let them go, right? One of them would be, and the other one would be, uh, would be sacrificed there. So um, <clears throat> Leviticus uh, 16, verses 19 through 22 there, he shall sprinkle uh, the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from 
the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of uh, reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions <clears throat> in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness and the goat shall uh, and, and uh, the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. So there you go. I forgot the verse was there. So I was describing it and then we read the verse. There you go. <clears throat> so Christ is our sin bearer, right? We already read there uh, Isaiah 53 where Christ uh, bore our iniquities, right? That, that our our stripes were laid upon him. So, man, we're running behind. Um, <clears throat> maybe we'll stop there and then we'll start talking about the foundation and all that stuff next week. Any questions or thoughts, comments on, on the study so far? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, uh, you're talking about the, where, where were you at there? Oh, the appearance, yes. Yes. Four. It was four, four, uh, four in number, just like the gospel accounts are four in number. Does it make sense? The, the uh, curtains, right? <clears throat> the curtain has four layers, but it has has a lot but four main layers right you have the as we we talked about um the first curtain being the inner curtain the the linen blue purple and scarlet with uh with the the um um with the cherubims on it then you have the the goat's hair um curtain and then you have the ram's uh skins curtain and then you have the badger's skins curtain right so those four curtains represent in a simple way not in a complex way but in a simple way they represent the four gospels Does that make sense um now again like i said in a simple way you start trying to describe well matthew was the ram skin you know i i don't know you know i don't know that it goes that deep i think it's just as simple as there's four gospels four curtains and, you know, so maybe you can go deeper and find the significance but that what <clears throat> not not directly no no that's just something that we kind of put together as it seems to match you sir <laughs> what's that huh never mind all right were you looking for the part where it says that Oh, he doesn't reference a passage for that. <clears throat> now, you know, uh, in uh, in Exodus 26, verses 1 through 30, it deals with all that, and then we deal with the, the different curtains. Remember, as we went through our study, we talked about the four curtains, right? And as I, I peeled back the layers there, you have the four curtains. So just unhooking this. Um, Maybe do two of them. Right there, right under there. So there. see here, right. you've got one layer, two layers, three layers. There's four, right? Four layers, right. yeah. Right. The four curtains. So that those four curtains there symbolizing the four gospels. Now that's not that's that's something that, that Brother Sargent actually uh, is is pointing out. It's not necessarily something that's somewhere in the Bible that says, oh, these four curtains represent the four Gospels. He's just pointing it out. So, um, I'll have to hook that later. 
<clears throat> but yeah, so so you asked about what was your what was your question about that though? Just that how does it? Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, no, it pictures Christ in a sense. So in three ways, uh, just to kind of like bring it together as a whole or summarize in three ways, the appearance um is a type of Christ in the sense that the inside shows the glories of Christ. Um, you know, that the, the, um, the, and then, and then it, then it points out the magnificent curtain, right? All these curtains have the four layers. So just like the four gospels, then it talks about the cherubim on that curtain representing God's majesty, uh, majesty and, and the, being like the guardians of God's throne. Um, around the sides would be the radiance of gold, right? All of those, all of those, I mean, there's a bunch of wooden posts all the way around that are all overlaid in gold. And so that they're uh, representing deity, all of that on the inside. Then the outside, you have that, that the, you know, you got badger skins. It's tough, it's strong, but it's, it's drab. It's not like the most beautiful thing, but it's, just the same as representing Christ, right? Because, um, you know, on the outside, he wasn't like showing off, right? So, and then in between being the reconciliation where Christ is our mediator, right? Where he goes in between. So um, those, those three concepts of, of the tabernacle itself, representing Christ in its typology. Of course, we'll talk about the foundation, the security, uh, the door, all of that, uh, and how it represents Christ in each of those things. Then we'll start talking about the pieces inside, right? The golden candlestick and so on and so on and so on, right? So in the sense that, you know, the tip, the, the type of it, the type that it is of Christ, um, he's just grabbing different sections of it and saying, this is how this is a type of Christ in a sense. So does that... Are we on the same page on that? Or? About the Gospels? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's just kind of correlating the, the four layers for the, to the four Gospels. So, anything else? All right. Let's go ahead and...